You know what's more important than looking at Dynasty ADP? Looking at real money dynasty startup drafts where people actually have something at risk, where someone needs to go through and go, okay, well, yeah, do I actually want Cortland Sutton here? Do I want Brandon Cooks? Do I want game? They actually have risk associated with that draft pick. That one pick is going to be with them for years to come. So what I want to do is I want to evaluate the newest dynasty league hosted by Zachary over there, a part of our locals community. Of course, these are hosted regularly. Thank you, Zachary, for conducting what? Like, I think that you've had five of these so far. I host about 2025. 20, Regardless, this is a recent dynasty startup draft. We're going to be looking at the best wide receiver values here. And before we get into it, go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you play dynasty fantasy football. Let's dive into our first wide receiver that I will admit... <sighs> we have talked way too much about. Okay. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I, I can't stop talking about this Denver Broncos wide receiver room. And with Jerry Judy, he is the wide receiver one. And with Jerry Judy, you are getting a discount in dynasty drafts here. Jerry Judy goes in the sixth round of this draft. Jerry Judy actually ends up going as the wide receiver 23, which is Pretty damn funny because if we look at Judy, while yes, he's going into year three, while yes, Jerry Judy, his best finish ever at the wide receiver position was wide receiver 64 this past year. Jerry Judy still has a ton of room to develop like we've already discussed. Everybody has discussed this Denver Broncos situation has been disgusting over the past two seasons, which is why I hated Jerry Judy last year. I hated Coral Sutton. I was never drafting these Denver Broncos wide receivers until they get Wilson. And once you get Russell Wilson coming over, we have to reevaluate the situation. And we look at the wide receivers in Denver. And what are we hearing out of camp right now? We are hearing, oh, Coral Sutton's the wide receiver one. Tim Patrick's the wide receiver two. Uh, Jerry Judy may be a slide. Jerry Judy may be the flanker. Jerry Judy may not be the wide. Okay, let's take a step back. Let's look at the fact that Jerry Judy is younger than someone like Kenny Pickett. Jerry Judy is younger than someone like Jalen. It's absurd how young Jerry Judy still is and how he will continue to get better from where he has been over the past two seasons. But do we need him to get that much better to be the wide receiver one in Denver? I don't think so. Because if we go through and look at what these wide receivers did this past year, Cortland Sutton, from a yards per route run standpoint, who's almost four years older than Jerry Judy, 1.5 yards per route run. Tim Patrick, who's supposed to be, I mean, the wide receiver too. Uh, no, that's not happening. Tim Patrick, 1.5 yards per route run. Where was Jerry Judy? With a horrible quarterback, a horrible situation. Jerry Judy, 1.9. Jerry Judy leaps and bounds better than these guys. And you also look at splits that Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy play together in. I've talked about this all the time, so we're not going to talk about this too much more. We've been saying this for months and months and months. Jerry Judy, 46 receiving yards a game. Cortland Sutton, 23 receiving yards a game. In the 11 games they played together so far through Jerry Judy's career. So Jerry Judy has been doubling the production of Sutton. He has been more efficient than Sutton. And real money fantasy football drafters over there on Underdog Fantasy for this upcoming season, they're paying respect to Jerry Judy. If we go and look at Underdog, right now Jerry Judy is going as the wide receiver 20 compared to in real money startup drafts. He's going as the wide receiver 23, wide receiver 24, wide receiver 25. He goes as the wide receiver 23 in this draft. I personally have him ranked as our wide receiver 19 in Dynasty Fantasy Football. I think he's a low-end wide receiver too this year. I think if you look at his age, I think if you look at how the Dynasty community will react to that type of production, just say the drafters on Underdog Fantasy where there have already been millions of dollars of fantasy football drafts this offseason, if they are right and Jerry Judy is the wide receiver 20, where is he valued next year? Now let's head over to another wide receiver that for whatever reason, the redraft community is willing to bite on, but the dynasty community is saying, nope, not interested. Amon Ross St. Brown. Here with Amon Ross St. Brown, this is a wide receiver that at the very beginning of the offseason, yes, I was calling him an overvalued wide receiver. I was saying, you know what? If we look at his production, while yes, it was incredibly impressive at the end of his rookie season. And while yes, he was a league winning wide receiver, it was, I don't want to say fraudulent, but it was definitely something that should come down to earth this next season. The reason for this is, A, you had Khalif Raymond as the top 
receiver alongside him. B, at the end of the year in particular, you had DeAndre Swift. You had TJ Hawkinson removed from this offense. So when you had the number one, number two pass catchers removed from Detroit, of course, someone has to get volume. And the player that's going to get volume is the wide receiver operating closer to the line of scrimmage. Historically speaking, we know that defensive coordinators are going to be trying to take away those deep threat. So... If you're in Mamara St. Brown, you're in a perfect situation to succeed, which he did. He drew a crazy amount of targets over the last six weeks of this past season. But now, if we're looking at the price point that you were getting on Mamara St. Brown, his price has fallen through the floor because of the addition of Jamison Williams, because of the addition of DJ Chark. But we were already assuming that this was going to happen. That should have already been baked into his price to begin with. So we look at Amon Ross St. Brown in this draft as a player that goes in the eighth round as the wide receiver 33 off the board and very similar. If we go and check out underdog fantasy, some real money fantasy football drafts right now. Right there, he's being drafted as the wide receiver 31. I personally, in my dynasty rankings, have him ranked as the wide receiver 29. So why are you expecting Amon Ross St. Brown to be more valuable in redraft as a second-year player than he is going to be in dynasty? Because if I look at this, and if you're drafting the wide receiver as the wide receiver 31 in redraft, there's a decent shot that they're a top 24 option this upcoming season. And if we just go through the range of outcomes and say, okay, if Amon Ross St. Brown is a top 24 wide receiver this upcoming season, where is he valued in dynasty startups? Um, he should be valued higher than Elijah Moore. He should be jumping over guys like, honestly, Terry McLaurin, Hollywood Brown, Keenan Allen. Like he's going to rise a ton given his age, given the pedigree he had going in. Remember, this was the brother of Equinemia Sam Brown. Everybody was excited about him going to USC out of high school. So I think if we were looking at a Monroe Sam Brown right now, while I hated him at the beginning of the offseason, if you're getting him in the eighth round, oh, I, I love that kind of value. And real quick, if you want to get into a real money fantasy football drafts, today, tomorrow, the next day. If you want to draft with us on those live streams, make sure you go sign up for Underdog Fantasy. You can find the link in the description, find in the comment section. And when you sign up for Underdog Fantasy and you use promo code FLOCK, they will match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 100. You'll get our Dynasty rankings, our Dynasty rookie rankings, our Dynasty rookie draft guide. Most importantly, you'll have some fun. You'll be able to get into some real money fantasy football drafts with us, in my opinion, on the best fantasy football site you can play on. But now let's go over to a wide receiver that's speaking of Underdog Fantasy, in my opinion, it is ludicrous to see him going this high in redraft. I think his redraft price should come down, but he represents a value in Dynasty. Oh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Now with Juju, I have to do this every single time we talk about him. I have to talk about the negatives before the positives because if you are new to the channel, I have to fill you in. I have lost a lot of money on Juju Smith-Schuster. Not only have I lost a lot of money on Juju Smith-Schuster, but I've also advised way too many people to follow me down the wrong path, to follow me down a path that only leads to misery. And I need to give a big old, I'm sorry, I'm stupid. I'm sorry, I'm stupid. I'm sorry, I'm stupid to everybody who's listened to me about Juju Smith-Schuster in the past. So let's go talk about the negatives. You can make the argument, oh, Mason, no, this is not someone that should be valued higher in Dynasty than Redraft because this is a wide receiver only on a one-year contract. That is completely fair, okay? I do have to admit, Juju Smith-Schuster, in my opinion, almost the worst sign for him this offseason is while, yes, he does land in a perfect situation. At the end of the day, this is a wide receiver that the Kansas City Chiefs only had to pay $2.5 million to. $2.5 million guaranteed. This is compared to Russell Gage getting, I mean, $20 million guaranteed. Allen Robinson getting $30 million guaranteed. This is Crazy. Look at the Christian Kirk contract and compare it to Juju Smith Schuster. Now, I will say a couple things about this. A, obviously, you have the incentives, yada, 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 that doesn't really matter. But B, Juju Smith Schuster is going to be that slot wide receiver. He will be that flanker that, historically speaking, is more valuable in fantasy football than it's going to provide value to an NFL offense. I mean, if you're an offensive coordinator, you need someone like Marcus Valdez Scantling. You may not plan on throwing him the ball very often, you may not plan on getting him volume, but you need him to stretch NFL defenses where Juju Smith Schuster, his skill set of being that slot wide receiver while he may be the guy getting the volume is just more replaceable overall in the NFL. But moving on from some of those negatives, also a negative that last time we had Juju Smith-Schuster in an NFL offense, he was very bad. Okay. 
And I mean very, very bad. This is a wide receiver that was barely getting to 1.4 yards per route run. That is brutal, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing else to say about that. But what I can look at is I can look at the fact that, hell, there are a ton of targets available in Kansas City. Travis Kelsey is going to be 33 years old this upcoming season. 30, 33. Okay, let, let me do something. Of course, this is kind of tongue-in-cheek. Of course, this is a little bit funny because it's comparing apples to oranges. Okay, I'll, I'll admit it's comparing apples to oranges. But Travis Kelsey is going to be 33 this upcoming season. Todd Gurley is 27. Oh, okay. J just to give some context, compare some apples to oranges. But here with Juju Smith, the shooter, he's also going up against Sky Moore, who it's a significant amount of teams passed on him in the NFL draft that definitely needed a wide receiver. He's also competing for targets with Marquez Valdez-Scantling. And with Marquez Valdez-Scantling, I want to say this right now. I think he is a more valuable wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs than Juju Smith-Schuster will be. I think with Marquez Valdez-Scantling, his deep threat ability is going to allow this team to have, I, I don't want to say... Tyree Kill or a replacement for Tyree Kill or anything of the sort. Of course, Marquez Valdez Scantling's never going to be in that same Tyree Kill range. But what we can do is we can look at Marquez Valdez Scantling and say, okay, well, he can plug the field stretcher role. He can take defensive attention away from Juju Smith Schuster, which is 100% something that we are going to need. But if we look at Marquez Valdez Scantling with his yards per route run over the past three seasons, he's been a very bad wide receiver. Marquez Valdez Scantling has been a very bad wide receiver playing alongside Devontae Adams. Just not really any efficiency there. So if Juju Smith-Schuster can become a consistent target for Patrick Mahomes in this offense, when Juju Smith-Schuster himself is only 25 years old right now, if you're looking at underdog fantasies being drafted as a low-end wide receiver too, in this draft he goes as the wide receiver 46, so a low-end wide receiver 4, high-end wide receiver 5, I think there's some arbitrage here where you can avoid Juju Smith-Schuster and redraft, but at the same time say, hell, if he has it in his range of outcomes to be that top 24 wide receiver, you have the name value, you have the age, you have the potential for people to buy right back in. You could buy Juju Smith-Schuster low in dynasty, potentially flip him after this season, after you get that production, because hell, the Kansas City Chiefs, if he does perform well, will probably have to re-sign him, knowing this team is a little limited on resources going forward. Now, our next wide receiver is going to be Chase Claypool. Someone that I honestly want to say I have not done a good enough job looking into this offseason until we wrote his chapter for our 2022 draft guide. Because if you go through and look at Chase Claypool and you just look at his points per game, Yes, you're going to say, okay, Chase Claypool took a significant step back from year one to year two. I mean, he was at times a top 24 wide receiver last year. Now on average, his rookie season wide receiver 35, but still sometimes top 24 option. Now in 2021, this fell to wide receiver 42 with Chase Claypool. You could not start him at all. If you were starting Chase Claypool, you were just burning money, lighting it on fire. Now, why is this? Did Chase Claypool's role, did his overall usage in this offense take down or did we see an extreme regression to the mean on his touchdown rate? And in my opinion, I think what we actually saw from Chase Claypool was just touchdown variance because if we go through and look at the target volume, you actually had Chase Claypool, while yes, being less productive overall, this is a wide receiver that had a higher target share, goes from about 15.98% to about 17.81. So he jumps up his target share by about two basis points. Then you look at his targets per game, targets per game, obviously up. You look at his receiving yards per game, his receiving yards per game were up this past season. And now you are getting that massive discount on Chase Claypool in Dynasty compared to where he was going a year ago right now in this draft you had chase claypool go as the wide receiver 51 i personally have claypool ranked as the wide receiver 43 in dynasty so i don't want to act like i am over the moon with chase claypool but think about this claypool if he does have some positive touchdown regression which should happen the man's freaking massive i don't think he's going to get back to scoring almost 11 of his targets for touchdowns that's not going to happen again of course that's an outlier 
But if he can get to 5 6% and he can continue to trend in the right direction with his overall target share in this offense, that's very exciting for Chase Claypool. And I know they bring in George Pickens. Yes, yada, yada, yada. They bring in Calvin Austin. He's nothing. But what we can say here is they possibly just brought in George Pickens based on the loss of James Washington, the loss of Juju Smith-Schuster. Those were, I mean, even Eric Ebron. This team lost some foundational pieces to this offense that were consistently getting snaps, that were consistently getting targeted. And we know Pittsburgh uh, for years now, they've always wanted a deep wide receiver core. And that hasn't stopped guys from Juju Smith-Schuster, Antonio Brown, not saying Claypool's either one of those players, but from them posting top 10 wide receiver seasons every single year, despite the continued draft capital poured into the depth of the wide receiver position for Pittsburgh. Now, let's go to our last wide receiver, someone that we have had so many questions about, someone that's on this thumbnail. Let's go over to Calvin Ridley. Now, if you're looking at where Calvin Ridley went in this draft, it is, in my opinion, about the range you should see him. I would take him a little bit earlier. You have JN taking Calvin Ridley in the middle of the 13th. Now, with Calvin Ridley, I don't want to apologize. I will say, at the beginning of the offseason, I was calling Calvin Ridley one of the biggest values in Dynasty. Now, it's my fault. It's on me that I didn't DM him on Instagram. Say, hey, man, are you um, betting this weekend? Are, are you on one of those sports betting sites? Do I need to be worried about that? It's my fault I didn't DM him and figure out that he was going to be suspended for the season. So I apologize for that. Now, if we move on, if we move on from Calvin Ridley in that light, what we can look at is we can look at a wide receiver that you're not going to have this upcoming season. So, of course, it is going to be so hard for Calvin Ridley to actually increase his dynasty trade value from the end of June to any time before say November, like with Calvin Ridley, you can't bind him. Like maybe you could with someone like Russell Gage in this range. And then all of a sudden, if Chris Godwin's out for an extended period of time, Russell Gage gets that massive bump. That's not happening with someone like Calvin Ridley. You're buying it's like you're buying a bond. Like you have to buy it. You're just sticking with it. You know what it is going to be. You know, it's going to be slightly more valuable next off season than it currently is, but you're not going to get any value from it today. And if we're looking at Calvin Ridley, where, where is he going next to? He's going next to Alec Pierce. He's going next to Wondell Robinson, Rondell Moore, John Mechie. So these other wide receivers that we can say, okay, Alec Pierce isn't giving you anything this year. Um, Wondell Robinson, he's not giving you anything this year. Those are long-term plays. So if all of a sudden we're throwing Calvin Ridley in the bucket of just long-term plays and we're saying these wide receivers are for 2023, why don't we go for the wide receiver that we've seen be a top five receiver before in fantasy? Why don't we go for a wide receiver that was in the same freaking draft class as DJ Moore? Personally, that would be my bet. Now, of course, of course. Most people are going to say you only want Calvin Ridley on a rebuilding roster. But my argument would be going back to the opportunity cost that you were giving up on. If you are a true contender and you tell me, oh no, Mason, you know what? I'm a contender this year. I need Ronald Jones. I can't trade Ronald Jones for Calvin Ridley like Calvin Ridley went behind him in this draft. I, I need Rojo. I would look at you in the eyes and I'd say, hey man, I know maybe Calvin Ridley's not going to give you any production this year and you're a contender, you need production this year, but you're not a contender. If you need Ronald Jones for your contending roster, if that is a pivotal piece that's not expendable for you, I, I'm sorry to break it to you. You're not going to win this year, okay? If you can't afford to give up Ronald Jones for Calvin Ridley and to extend your dynasty, my Twitter name is Build the Dynasty. That's what we're trying to do here. I, I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. Now, Thank you for being a part of the flock, supporting the channel. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have not done so already, please go down there, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. And most importantly, I just want to thank you, let you know I truly do appreciate you, and I really do hope you have a great day.